course guys, Puddlefire here, and today's video we're going to be going through something a little different today. We're going to be talking about the new Pokemon Mobile game that has recently come out, Pokemon Unite. Pokemon Unite has been at least out for at least two weeks now, pretty sure. And I'm going to give my thoughts and my opinions on the top five junglers in the game right now. The junglers are the main, like, source of damage in the game, really. They're the ones that get ahead and, like, help your team push the lanes and get carry you through the lanes, I guess. It's one of the most important roles in the game, and... In this video, I'm going to be discussing what are my top 5 junglers. Of course, this is my opinion. You guys can leave your opinions down below, of course. Let me know what your thoughts are, what your top 5 junglers are, etc, etc, etc. I will also be going through, like, the bills and also what moves to pick up, etc, and like that. So, if you guys do enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like down below. It'd be greatly appreciated. Also, subscribe if you haven't already. It means a lot. Let's aim for 50 likes in this video. It'd be greatly appreciated. But with that being said, let's get right into the video for you guys. Starting list off with the top 5 junglers is Absol. Most of these junglers are going to be fast, agile, and hard hitting characters. You won't see any like tanks, etc., on these lists. So we have starting the number 5 list off with Absol. Absol is a very mobile jungler with a lot of dashes, and his crazy crit damage is what carrying for the jungle. So, first and foremost, Ab um, Absol's main source of uh, damage is really coming out from his Super Lock. Super Lock increases Pokemon critical hit rate, so you really want to. You know, take use of that by hitting a lot of basic attacks and getting those low damage. And of course, Absol has um, two moves to start: Faint and Slash. Faint has like a little, like little sort of arc on it, so it allows you to like um, come in on an angle and do damage. It also drops the target's defense and any sort of shields that they have, so it's a good initiate. And then after you want to hit him with the Slash, Slash is just a basic slash hit damage. Both it just does damage, so you want to level that at the start of the game because you know. And it also boosts the critical hit rate, which is lovely on that, Absol. But here comes the move choices here. Would you want to go for Pursuit or Night Slash? I'd recommend definitely going for the Pursuit because um, it obviously, Pursuit, Night Slash, you have to actually like aim it at a slight angle. But Pursuit dashes straight ahead at enemy. And if the Pokemon is hit with uh, Pursuit, it will allow the user to have another dash, which will dash to another a different location. And it also lowers the opponent's movement speed so it's a good like go in do damage and keep hitting them and then you can dash out once you're done with them which is crazy which is great for Absol so I recommend going for Pursuit. Next up I think definitely Cycle Cut is the way it just does a massive amount of damage and also it drops the opponent's speed what you want as a jungler is to be able to stick to your opponent and just kill them as fast as possible let like them get in the way to their goals and healing up so with Absol you can just Cycle Cut in and drop their speed and also it also increases your next basic attack damage so it's really good to have um, Pursuit and Soka on Absol. And finally, his ult is just a massive displacement ability. It's actually crazy. But late game, in my opinion, Absol does fall off a lot because he's just very squishy and everyone eventually will begin to like just two hit you. So that's why I put Absol so far down on my list. But yeah, for Iron for Absol, I definitely would like to run the float zone because, of course, as a jungler, you want to be moving about as fast as you can. So you want to help your teammates from bot lane to top lane, etc. So you want that through the jungle. Uh, of course, you want the scope lens because in um, Absol's ability is, of course, super luck. So it increases the critical hit rate, and with the scope lens, it also increases the critical hit rate and critical damage. And the more attack you have, the more the critical, critical damage does. That's what leads into the attack rate. Every time you dunk with Absol, you have a lot of dashes. You could just dash in, dunk, and dash away. So every time you dunk with Absol, you get that attack boost, which then correlates to the scope lens, which increases your damage and critical hit rate damage. So. I think these three items of the core is probably, in my opinion, the best suit for Absol. There may be other items, but I do recommend using these items for Absol at the number 5 slot. For me personally, number 4, I would definitely put Greninja. I really enjoy Greninja. He's such a fun character to play. A lot of mobility and a lot of damage and a lot of healing. He has so much to his kit. That provides so much to himself feeling he can just 1v1 anyone really at all so i put greninja at number four on my list greninja is definitely an interesting one because it has to be at least a greninja to be at least useful because it gets bubble till it gets to level seven and bubbles don't do much to anyone at all bubble only just like hit, drops their speed once they hit so really when you want to play greninja you want to focus on farming and get to level seven so you get a different move but of course, um, he does get different moves at level 5 to replace his substitute. I would recommend going smoke screen because he actually lets you go invisible and also hazes the screen. Double team is more predictable just because of the fact that people can just assume you're, you're going in the direction you're running away. And they can just tell when you're running away. They can just follow you. But smoke screen actually hides you and you can actually go for cheeky dunks. I've done many 
attempts of doing cheeky dunks like smoke screen and hiding the grass, waiting for the opponent to walk past and get cheeky dunks in. So it's a really good ability. So I recommend going smoke screen for um, uh, Frogadier. And on to this one. This is uh, actually a choice for you guys. I like War Shuriken because War Shuriken uh, just is a nice poke. When you're running away, just sit and throw the War Shuriken back at them and poke them. It does a lot of damage. It also increases your movement speed and also decreases their movement speed and also heals you too. So it's a great initiate and a great escape poke too. All Greninja is about is poking and hitting and running away like a ninja. You know, you just hit and run. So I recommend that. It's a great ability. However, I think the lackluster part of Greninja is his um, War Shuriken. It's a massive AoE ability, which is very easy to dodge. They're very easy to dodge AoE abilities. And also, it's just it's just an AoE. It just hits on the ground, you can eject out, etc. And it's hard to aim to, really, because he's great at securing Zapdos, like, don't get me wrong, but I definitely feel like his weakest part of his kit is definitely the whole just alt part. And also, his passive is just um torrent which so if he's half if he's at under half health he gets increased speed and increased damage that's really it to greninja but onto the items of course of course like these are the core three items we have the muscle band float stone and attack weight muscle band is when basically the attacks are hit the damage increased by two percent of the opposing hp remaining so i recommend muscle band and increase, increase base attack speed which is great for greninja because his base has do hurt float stone of course just to get around the jungle faster it helps you out a lot as a jungler you definitely need to float stone and of course the attack weight as Greninja being a physical attacker, getting dunks in and get that attack up is the best part, especially when you're under that torrent ridge, it does a lot more damage. So that's why I put Greninja on my number four slot. This is probably a favorite of mine. Cinderace is definitely my favorite jungler to jungle with. As in slot, I put him, I put him higher, but the other two junglers are awfully much higher. As you may know, you probably already guessed who they are. But Cinderace is definitely one of my favorites here. Cinderace is such a strong range mon as a jungler, like completely all range. He's literally all range. He just kicks everything <laughs> at this point. Of course, you start off at um, a Rover Skull Bunny into a Rover Cinderace. You hopefully get your prime once you get to level 7 because evolving is crucial in this game. You need to get that farm, which is the best part about being a jungler. You get to level 7 as fast, faster than anyone else can. That's why. Um, Cinderace jungle does do a lot of work in this um, situation. Of course, you're going to start off with Ember low sleep. You want to level Ember because that's your clearing speed. It helps you clear fast. It also burns enemies too. Also guarantees hit and lowers the attack, which is nice. Low sleep, of course. And um, once you get to level seven range, I'd recommend uh, getting Blaze Kick because Parable is an ability that you can dodge and you have to actually aim it. While Blaze Kick is a guaranteed hit and it also um, decreases the opponent's movement speed and also increases your attack. Of, the, of your next basic attack so it's a great ability to have to like go in and also CC them when you blaze kit you're CCing them in place for a second CC is so crucial in this game that a second of CC can get you killed so it's a great way and in here when you want flame charge or faint it's up to you the difference between flame charge and faint is massive the seven second cooldown but I recommend faint because faint has an immunity frame so you can like dodge certain abilities like Gengar's hex that does a lot of damage you want to dodge that you can then you can outplay Gengar and also Faint gives you um, a heal buff too, so your next three base set heal you. So it's a great way to like also heal up in the jungle, but Faint is a great immunity frame for Cinderace that doesn't have any mobility at all. And finally we have Bicycle Kick, which is Cinderace's Unite move, which is similar to Greninja's. It's also a very easy Unite move to dodge, but it also increases your movement speed for a short time once you hit it, and it does massive AoE damage to anyone in the range. So Cinderace has a lot of damage, so much damage. The highest, I think he has the most damage in the game, in my opinion. He does a lot of damage by kicking and kicking everything. But moving on to Cinderace's items. It's really the same set as Greninja. However, you can mix it up. You can take the Muscle Band off if you want the Scope Lens for crits. Or you could also have the b b a score shield so it can help you dunk faster, which helps you like dunk and get those points up. The more attack you have Cinderace, the more damage you do. Of course, you want the float zone so you can move around the jungle faster. And it's great for Cinderace that has like barely any mobility other than fate and attack weight increases the damage. And of course, muscle band more damage, more basic attack speed. Since he's a kicker, you know you want to attack as much as you can. So definitely want the muscle band. So I recommend these three items for Cinderace, or you can switch it up to the um, score shield or the scope plane if you want to do crits or get your dunks in secured, etc. But yeah, that's why Cinderace is number third slot. I definitely feel like he has more of an impact than most junglers. I really love him in the jungle, he's definitely a personal favorite of mine, but moving on to number two. So 
some of you guys will get mad at me for not putting Gengar at the top of the list, but hear me out here. I definitely feel like Gengar is the strongest jungler in the game. However, his kit is so simple. If you mess up one time, he will get punished immediately. He's like that for most junglers, but I definitely feel like Gengar gets punished the most if he does mess up his kit. Here's why. So of course, as you know, Gengar starts with the Ghastly. Ghastly's clear is absolutely terrible with Lick and Will-O-Wisp. He takes forever to clear camps. He will always be behind till he gets to at least level 7 where he learns his good moves. But yeah, but as a Ghastly, he is the slowest clearing jungler. He just cannot clear jungle camp properly. He's just really slow. But he does get rewarded once he gets to that certain point in the game. Of course, once he becomes a Haunter at level 5, you want to learn Sludge Bomb over Shadow Ball. Sludge Bomb poisons the target and he just throws at anyone and it just poisons the enemy, which is beneficial for level 7. Level 7 is when Haunter becomes a threat. When you see a level 7 Haunter, run away from it because it learns Hex. Hex is a move that can da dash Haunter towards an enemy, but you may think, why is it so strong? But if this enemy is inflicted with a state of sleep, burn, poison, paralyzed, Hex can reset to one second. That's why Sludge Bomb, you Sludge Bomb a target, and then you Hex them after, you can infinitely Hex for like four seconds. And if you time it properly, you can Sludge Bomb Hex, 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 Sludge Bomb Hex, Hex, Hex. Gengar's also one of the fastest objective clearer in the game. He can delete Zapdos within 10 seconds even. He does a lot of crazy damage. Gengar's absolutely a monster, decimates a lot of people in a 1v1, in 1v5s, he goes crazy. Finally, we have Gengar's ult, his Unite move. Phantom Ambush, Gengar goes invisible and he starts moving at a crazy speed and he sneaks up on opponents. If he presses, if you press the Unite move again near an opponent, he'll jump up and do massive damage and it will decrease their movement speed for a short period of time and then you just combo them to death. Gengar just absolutely decimates opponents just because of his Sludge Bomb Hex. But to get there, it takes a, a while and you just have to focus on farming, which is why the jungle part of Gengar shines a lot because he just gets all that bomb for himself. So never take a farm away from your Ghastly. Let them get ahead. Let them carry through games. But onto the items for Gengar. I think these are the best items for Gengar. Special attack specs, wise glasses, and the shell belt. Why special attack spec is the same as the attacking weight. If you score a goal, you increase your special attack by 12 right here. So you just get so much damage as Gengar has the highest special attack in the game. His attacks already special attacks are crazy high, so it just keeps stacking that will do making do more damage. Wise glasses already increases by 5% right there and gives it a base boost to 27, which is crazy. Of course, on my levels, they're not maxed out, of course. And finally, the shell belt, which is the best part. The higher the special attack of Gengar, the more he heals. So every time he hits an opponent, he'll just keep healing, healing. Healing, so he becomes an unstoppable monster. So I think these three items on Gengar are a must. He just does crazy damage and he just keeps sustaining. That's how he can tank everything and take so much hits and yet heal so much because of his crazy damage. So both these items having high special attack will lead to Shell Bell, just giving him more heals. They just all synergize perfectly with each other. So this is the best three items I think is for Gengar. Definitely should run these items. If you don't, I think you are throwing the game. Finally, the, f the best jungle on the list, I definitely get Zero Aura. This unit's absolutely crazy. He's cracked. There's a lot of damage, a lot of mobility on the character. You may think, why put him above Gengar? I feel like if you do do well Gengar, you will frag. However, if you do miss a single ability, you will get punished. Gengar gets punished very easily if he misses his hex. There's a lot of characters, a lot of mobility and eject bonds, so you can get away from characters. But Zero Aura, I think, doesn't get as punished as Gengar. So for Zero Aura's progression, we have, of course, and the best part is he doesn't have to evolve. So he's already like, you know, doesn't have to like worry about just evolving game, like those stat boost. So Zero Aura's ability is uh, Volt, Volt Absorb. It gains electric charge, which electric charge, and it turns into attack damage, so he does more damage. So he has two moves, Slash and Agility, one level Slash. Slash is just a nice ability that CC the target for a second. And dash, it just lets you dash, of course, nothing to worry about. So once you get to level 6, you get a new ability, you get Volt Switch or Spark. Either or is fine, but in my opinion, I prefer Spark. You get three Sparks, you get three charges of Sparks, so you can leap three times. And when you leap and you attack, you can just instantly jump to a target. Spark again, jump to a target, Spark again, jump to a target. This also, this move also heals you and increases your base attack damage when you're using it. It's actually kind of crazy. And for level 8, I'd recommend going Discharge. The AoE from Discharge is so much damage. The ridiculous. Like, discharge can go up to like 3,600 damage in total. It's crazy. And it also like decreases the movement speed. 
it's absolutely wild how much damage this does, especially in like the end game fight where we're all cutting receptors. If you jump in and discharge everyone, you're doing so much damage. Even if you die, you just got so much damage on, on everyone. It's crazy. And finally, we have Plasma Gale, which is um, a sure hit. A sure hit means guaranteed hit. This move just throws a massive like thunderbolt on a target, and it, and it is AOE. So if it, targets are grouped up, they all take damage, so it's a great secure for Zapdos, and the best part about this is, it gives their aura increased base attack range to anyone that's around in that area once it's used, so their aura just get a massive power spike, so with all of Zero's lifesteal and base attack, attack increase, he makes him like a formidable opponent to 1v1, he can just change 1v1 just after owing all that 1v5, does so much damage for no reason, he's a very strong guy, which is why I put him at number 1. I recommend giving him, of course, the attack weight on most attack mods. That attack, 9 attack, you can stack this properly infinitely, I'm pretty sure. So if you just keep dunking little by little, you get more attack, which is beneficial for Zero because it does more damage and more heals. Because the more attack you do, the more you heal. Floatstone, of course, you're a jungler, you want to be moving around faster. Even though Zero, ha Zero has 3 dashes, it's still nice to have the floatstone effect where you just move faster and it gives you a base attack for Zero, which is a physical jungler. And therefore, the last item can either be Muscle Band or Scope Lens. I like Scope Lens because the crit, the lucky crit you can get. From scope lens will change fights completely. I know I was playing based off luck, but I think the scope lens is a great item here to pick up just because of the just the crit damage and critical hit rate. And if you crit and life still at the same time, you get more health back. So these are the three items I use for Zero Aura. Zero Aura is my number one jungler. Let me know what you guys think down below, of course, because I think Zero Aura is a top jungler. But if you guys did enjoy today's video, leave a like down below, it'd be greatly appreciated. Subscribe if you're new and let me know your thoughts down below what you guys think my top your top five junglers are and if you disagree let me know if you agree of course with that being said thanks so much for watching i'll catch you guys in another video peace